CJ Zachary is a best-selling children's book author who works exclusively with her illustrator husband, Zach. The husband and wife team is from Arkansas and work in elementary education. Zach is an art teacher, while CJ is a dyslexia interventionist. She also has taught kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and has served as a literacy facilitator. Their first book, The Awkward Avocado, teaches the importance of acceptance and self-love. It has been a smash hit since its release in 2022. CJ and Zach just recently released the sequel, Awkward Avocado and the Interrupting Raptor. Their children are the inspiration behind their hit children's books. I hope you enjoy our interview. All right, well, CJ, thank you so much for being here. I'm, I'm really excited to, to meet you and talk to you, and I've, I've been a fan of your, your books for a while now, so um, thank you so much for, for coming. Thank you. I'm excited, too. I'm so excited to do this. This so, is going to be so much fun. I know. So, well, I want to, you know, obviously you work in education and I know that like as a career, like there's, there's so much work that goes into, you know, like the hours you put into education. It's, it's a lot of work. And I, I'm just like curious, you know, what inspired you to, to write a children's book with your career? Well, I've, I've been in education for 15 years. Um, and Zach and I did something else completely different from education before we decided to go back to school and be educators. And we both went to college for totally different things because he's, you know, the artist. He went for graphic design. And I actually went for pediatric physical therapy, but I just knew I always wanted to work with kids. Um, and I have my favorite subject has always been writing to teach. And I love to teach writing. And I have loved to write at least since the first grade. Um, because my first grade teacher will still talk about it. And when I started writing in first grade, it was like little poems, and you know, I liked poetry and kind of stuck with that for a long time. And then when I graduated college, I decided, oh, I'm gonna write the great American novel and this is gonna be awesome, and they're gonna turn it into a movie. And fast forward 15 years later, had not finished the novel which I'm sure so many novelists can be like, yes, I've been working on this for decades. And Zach, my husband, had talked about wanting to do comic books. And one day we were just like, let's just pause on the comic books. Let's pause on the novel since I've already paused it for 15 years. And let's meet in the middle and let's try a children's book. You know, I'll write it. You illustrate it. And we just, kind of decided to do it then and started putting, you know, ideas down in a little idea notebook for what all we'd come up with that we thought kids would relate to and kids would enjoy reading. So that's just kind of how it all began. And, you know, I'm so, I'm always so fascinated by children's book authors because like everything about children's books is just like so creative. Like, like for example, like in your instance, in, in the Awkward Avocado, like your characters are like, they're fruit and vegetables, but they convey like such a deeply human story. Like, it's amazing. So how did you, with that, how did you come up with the concept for the awkward avocado and like every, like it's concept, it seems everything. So we were talking in our room and we had our little idea notebook out and we had some cute stuff and we were like, well, which one do we want to start with? You know, which one do we think we can really take off with? And um, our daughter, who is very much like Zach, and she's very shy, very introverted, and has a lot of little quirks, she just walked in the bedroom, and she was, she didn't say anything, she just started kind of waving, and and just walked out backwards, and we were like, okay, you know, we're like, you're just so awkward, and I swear, if we would have been cartoon characters, you would have seen the light bulb <laughs> over our head. Oh my gosh. And I swear to you, I, I turned the page in that notebook and I started writing down all her little quirks that she does. And like, she's, I say she's introverted. She's got all these little quirks. I mean, you can read the book. There's 30 quirks in there that are completely her. And, but she, you know, like sports and she's got friends and stuff. So she's not like completely antisocial, right. but we started writing these down and just talking about how awkward she was and it, it just flowed out and it's like I almost had the whole book right there in that instance and um, then 
you know, with the, as far as the title, I knew I wanted awkward in it. I knew it had to have the word awkward in it. And being an ex-kindergarten teacher, I really like alliteration and rhyme. And really it, you know, kind of flowed out in kind of poetry in verse, like I'd always done. It's like I reverted back to my five-year-old self and just kind of kept going with the poetry and the rhyme. And so since I like alliteration, that was just the first thing that popped in my head was like, oh, the awkward avocado. And so that was just like the idea of the title. And then Zach went to his workstation and drew out this little picture. And I said, oh my gosh, that's it. And it ended up being the cover of what you see on the book. That was the very first little idea that that's like, you think like this? And I said, oh, that's it. Let's get, this is the idea. We're going with this one. And that that's going to be the cover. That's the cutest thing. It's perfect. And like the way it, it came together is, it's amazing. And it's such a, it's such a great story. And I think there's a reason why people have loved it so much. And I want people to buy the book and I want people to read it. So without giving everything away, what is something that you would like, you know, children and families to take away from reading it? I really, it's, it's always been throughout history, but I really feel like these days kids are really struggling with Mm self-doubt and they're really like struggling with trying to feel like they have to conform to certain stereotypes or feel like they have to conform to the norms you know, or this idea of how they should behave and how you should act and how you should look. And the the negativity, they just kind of draw negativity of others. And I really just want people to be able to relate to the book and take away that there is no norm and there is no way you have to be. Just be yourself and it's fine. And it doesn't matter if you're different because if we weren't all different, that life would just be boring if we were all the same but you know kids don't really understand that but if you can just make something relatable to them and they can see oh I I act like this too and it's okay that I act like this and I do these things and that's Mm -hmm. completely normal because there really is no normal you know exactly set themselves I feel like for kids it's so hard to accept that like not until you get older do you realize that like it's cool to be different, exactly. you know, like kids, it's, it's so hard. I mean, you see it, you, I don't work in education, but I just, you know. Oh yeah. See it every day. Different. Oh yeah. Especially mm-hmm. when like a certain group, you know, and it's confidence too, because kids pretty much either you're one or the other, either you're like overtly confident in mm-hmm. yourself or you're just, you know, well, I'll just do what this kid is doing. Cause I, yeah. I'm just not confident enough to do it. But uh, that's what I want is just to kids to be like it's okay and I can love myself and also if they are that more confident kid to be accepting of this kid that's that's not like you and it's kind of hard to see sometimes if you're like super extrovert and super confident to even realize that people wouldn't be like you yeah and I feel like a lot like just from what you post on on social, it seems like a lot of people are connect like re, like the the message is getting through to so many people. And overall, just the awkward avocado. I mean, and we'll talk about your second book shortly, but just your first book, it's been such an amazing success. And um, you know, just a two part question. Like, I know that like you know, succeeding in self publishing is is all about persistence and effort. Like, it's a it's hard work. And mm-hmm. so I wanted to know like what type of, you know, for inspiration for other authors like yourself, because I always say when I, I talk to people that I, I work with here that like you and, and Zach have done like everything right when it comes to self-publishing a successful children's book. So, you know, what initiatives did you do to promote and market the book? And did you expect it to take off quite like it did? So when we first started out, I think as most first-time authors, you're like, I'm going to make this book, and it's cute, and people are just going to buy it, (laughs) you know, and it's just going to take off, and um, you've got to learn the ropes, because there are ropes to learn, and luckily, we published with Book Baby, and you guys have so many uh, good articles, and, you know, webinars and stuff. I I read every blog, (laughs) post, everything that 
book baby said to do, we did it. If they were like, um, you need a YouTube channel. Yes, we're starting a YouTube channel. You know, you need a website. Okay, yes, we're starting a website. And then, you know, there's so many good indie author groups on Facebook and just joined all those. And it's just such a great community of just advice, you know, all the time, just great chunks of advice. And just every webinar I could go to, I did. And I just had like a notebook of ideas. This is what we need to do. So basically every piece of advice, we just took it and rolled with it. And, you know, you need the social media and you need the website and you need the YouTube channels and you, you've got to put it out there because if it's not out there, how are people going to find your book? Exactly. <laughs> so it's kind of like what you don't realize, like, it can't, you can't just put it out to the universe. You have to tell people about it or they're not going to find it. It's they like starting a business. So like you have to, yes. yeah, you got to build it from the ground up because like you, your book is your business and you're the publisher and you have to promote it. Um, but yeah, I, and I love the work you all do. Like, I love your social channel. I also love the in-person events you do. Like, I love the kid who wears the avocado suit. It's amazing. So we found that avocado suit. I was like, okay, I don't care how much it costs because we're going to use it at like every Amen. event. So every time I go to like a school visit or an author signing, I'll ask a teacher, who's who's the kid with the biggest personality? I've got a costume for him. I need, I need like a sweet kid with a big personality. And so we always, there's always a kid willing to put that avocado costume on. Okay, it so you're recruiting. Such, yeah. <laughs> you're recruiting. And it's not that hard. It's like, who wants to wear this? amazing but it's uh, the teachers always know it's like what what kid would wear this and just be like really good and it's usually an older kid like yeah. it's good with the younger kids and get them you know hyped up and it's it's so cute I love that one so did you did you expect it to be to <laughs> blow up like it did or was did it come a little bit as a surprise okay so here's something you got to know about me first off I am kind of overtly maybe overly optimistic hmm. and overly hopeful and I'm an Enneagram three <laughs> if you know anything about that we're a very rare breed not many people get three so me being the overachiever I'm like oh my gosh this is going to come out we're going to first week New York Times bestseller we're going to retire and we're going to move to the beach this year I mean I just you know you're, you're planning outfits you're talking to Kelly Clarkson and practicing in the shower. You know, you're on the Today Show. So <laughs> I did. That's good. Zach, Zach is grounded. Mm -hmm. So he just laughs at me because I'm always like out in space. And he's like the person that's got to pull me back down. You know, and he's like, I think it's really cute that you that you think all this is going to happen. But, <laughs> you know, it takes a lot of work like Zach knew. And so I did eat some humble pie right when it came out and that he and my family and my friends are are really excited and they're like it's doing good I think you're doing good but since I'm you know not I don't have the mansion on the beach I'm like we're failing well, the <laughs> so thing everybody with, has to bring me back down to earth. the thing with children's books though is they it's like there's not a limit for them because they just continue to stay relevant and like yeah. The messages are timeless so it, it's like it's a long it's a long process and you, oh, it is. you know from what i've seen and know about the industry your book has been doing amazing so i would thank you <laughs> the optimism is good it is i just have to i have to breathe and bring myself back down <laughs> so well speaking of zach what you know you and him are a unique team because you know obviously with children's books I talk with a bunch of authors who collaborate with illustrators, but you're the first person I've met who collaborates with their husband, their significant other. So, you know, what does the creative process look like with you two? Like collaboration, just, you know, working, like having that working relationship, obviously, in addition to, to being married. So Zach and I work really well together. We've known, we've been together since we were 14. Like we have dated since we were 14. And if we weren't dating, we were really good friends. So it's, I married my best friend. And so we work really well together. So, and, and Zach knows he's the artist and I'm the writer and we, we kind of don't cross into each other's fields, mm -hmm. but we, we throw out ideas together. 
So if he's got an idea for something, you know, I'm going to add that in. And if he illustrates something, I'm like, oh, what if we added this in there? Then, you know, we're open to each other's ideas. But usually, like with the first book, I wrote it down. And then um, <laughs> I put this on social media, too, where this is my secret shame is that I still cut up a little paper book and I make a little mock-up. Uh, you know, okay. Book. And I will every once in a while maybe just sketch out a little illustration of kind of if I've got an image in my head, like this is this is what was in my head when I wrote this. And I don't get my feelings hurt if he doesn't <laughs> use that or anything. I just say, this is what I was thinking. But usually mm -hmm. with, you know, his artist's mind and his creativity, he comes up with something way better <laughs> than me. He's like, but I was thinking this. I was like, oh, that's that's way better. That's way better. But in he'll storyboard out like the whole thing and then show me and he'll illustrate it out. And then we'll look at every illustration together. When he gets through with a page, we look at it. And that's when we decide like, maybe we should make that this color or what if we added this in there? So it's a really good collaboration and we really work well off of each other yeah I feel like in a writer and an illustrator just they each have like different brains and you know there's give and take on both sides and I think that you know when you work together like when each side like opens their mind up to something the other one's saying and then vice versa it's really what makes a project work well together and that oh yeah definitely reign true with the work you did and so the book your first book, The Aquarab Avocado, was released last year, 2022. How long was the process of, you know, start to finish writing, illustrating, creating the book? I really think from that day that we started writing it and mapping it out and storyboarding and illustrating and the whole um, publishing process with Book Baby, it really, from the time we started it to the time we pushed the publish button, it was about eight months. Okay. Which seems really fast if you compare, you know, the 20, 25 years I've been working on that novel. That's not going to happen. So, you know, it's, it, that seems pretty fast, but maybe not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but the thing is with it, it seemed like almost everything with the book was meant to be, like you said, like with your daughter walking in. I don't know. Sometimes when a project is just like supposed to happen, like it, it just happens. It just flows out like that. Yeah. And what is, for you, what did you find, like, most fulfilling with, you know, self-publishing this children's book and getting your message out there? Well, with self-publishing, I really like that you have, it. you're the creator. Nobody's holding your ideas back. You can do what you want, um, especially with Zach and I, because usually, you know, when you go the traditional route, they pair you with a illustrator. Um, we just wanted to say what we wanted to say, and he wanted to do what he wanted to do with his art so I really liked that and I really just I've liked this whole journey because you get to see you get to be a part of everybody seeing this book and you get everyone's feedback from it and it's you like you said it's your business you're pushing it out yeah. there you're at the forefront with everybody and you're just you're getting that feedback right then from everyone it's it's been a really good journey with the self publishing. Well, I now do we need anything else? <laughs> and now after your your first journey, you've decided to come back for more. You have a yes. second book out there. Um, yes. So the second book, the first one was my daughter, and so the second book, we also have a son, and we knew we had to do one for him. You know, first of all, so when his feelings hurt, he was excited for his sister. His feelings weren't really hurt, but he's the really loud colorful one so uh our daughter's like zach our son is like me and so we're like oh his is gonna be fun we're gonna make this fun and with the first one it was just so sweet and we just made everything so simplistic like even with the illustrations there's not a lot of color there's not a whole lot of detail because it was all about the message so with this one we were like, we're going to put a little more detail in the illustration. It's going to be a little more colorful. It's going to be more loud um, because it's it's called Awkward Avocado and the Interrupting Raptor, which Zach came up with. Um, I, I may have come up with the Awkward Avocado, the first one, but he's like, when we when we do Ronin's, 
it's it's got to be the interrupting raptor because my son actually roars all the time <laughs> and you can hear it in the book trailer you know that we made that's him that's my kids voices and that's him doing his little roar that I can't do it's like in his throat <laughs> and so he would interrupt all the time and he wouldn't even have to be there in the room he could just be off somewhere in the house you're just trying to have a conversation and you hear this raptor you know like roaring right. in the house so Zach's like, it's got to be called the interrupting raptor. And it's really just about their relationship. And um, it's probably all little brothers because I, too, am a big sister that I'm almost eight years older than him. So um, a lot of that comes from mine and my brother's relationship, too. But it's mainly Kenley and Ronan. Like, it's mainly how they interact with each other and how he lovingly annoys her. But the, so it's got a little humor, got a little heart. M my kids' relationship, that's their humor. And mine and my brother's relationship is more the heart of it. I'm sure yeah. my parents would say that it wasn't like that at one point. But the memories we have are very sentimental and we're like best friends. And exactly. maybe they'll be one day too. <laughs> you don't need to remember any arguments. No. <laughs> so was the... What were the creative processes any different for creating a sequel or was it pretty much similar? It was really similar. Um, I think we just felt more comfortable this time. Um, it did take longer to write this one just because with, with Kinley, it just, it just flowed out and it just happened mm -hmm. right then. Um, with it, with this second one being about both of them, um, some of it, like the beginning flowed out and then it was like, what am I going to write about? What, you know, I don't, nobody cares about every single thing they do. You know, so it's like, what's the little funny things they do? Right. Um, and then I really wanted to keep it the same with, with the verse and the rhyme, you know, like the first one. Um, and we'll probably, with the other books in the series, probably just keep it like that. Um, maybe in the future when we do another series, it'll be more like a story you know, um, with characters interacting, but I really like the verse, and that's um, kind of just my thing, I guess, since first grade. It's just, I like the the verse and the poetry and almost kind of lyrical. I like it like that, but um, yeah, the process was pretty much the same. It's just maybe a little easier as far as getting things done, but maybe a little harder to write. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're now you're aware of, like, how publishing in general works but um the writing might be a little bit a little bit different I mean it's you know but I, I think you do a really nice job keeping it like you could tell it it fits into the original themes of, of the opera avocado but like it's 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 truly its own story and um I love it so I'm, I'm excited for people to start to start reading that as well I know I am too I want to I want to hear from all the siblings <laughs> all right, I know. I actually have a. I have two younger siblings, so I can understand the. Oh, so you're the oldest. I actually have one old. Well, there's four of us. I have. I have three. Oh, brothers. gracious! Yeah, there's. <laughs> uh, there, I have three brothers. There's four of us total. I'm the, I'm the second oldest, so two younger, two younger ones. Um. So you know, like I mentioned before, like you, you work in education. You're very busy. You're two kids. Like, and there's a lot. Like for self-published authors you know, they have careers and busy lives. So how do you, you know, balance your busy career and your personal life with the amount of work you put into writing and publishing and promoting your books? Um, yeah, it's tough. It's a, it's a lot. Um, you know, so if we, we wake up pretty early in the morning and we'll try to do things in the morning, maybe just do a little social media, you know, here and there, make a little post, interact with people just, you know, before we start getting ready. And then you do your 7.30 to 3.30. Well, if you and... were, if you work in education, you're probably at four in the morning. Everybody, <laughs> everybody I know who works education is up at like four. Yeah. The dreams, the dreams wake you up. And then yeah. like the list in your head of things you have to do is like, oh, oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you have to do that today. And then you just yeah. start <laughs> to wake up early and start doing it. And like now I'm, I was a kindergarten, first and second grade teacher and I taught all those. And so if I was still in that classroom setting, I think it would be so much harder to get all of this done because you do bring that work home with you. 
But now that I really just work with dyslexic kids and I'm a dyslexic interventionist, I can leave a lot of that at work. And so I can do like the 7.30 to 3.30 and get to come home and do, you know, mom stuff and wife stuff. And yeah. my kids are pretty good um, about not being needy and they're pretty in independent, especially my oldest. Um, but, you know, our phones are like everything now. So I can carry a phone around with me and make dinner. I can carry a phone around with me yeah. and tie a shoe, you know, so that's easy. But really a lot of work gets done on the weekends and, and breaks. And we just try to fit all the little pieces in, you know, early in the morning or or at night before we go to bed. Because we are early, like, don't mess with my sleep. Like, we're in that bed at eight. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, that's the best time, honestly. I'm I'm usually in bed by 8.30, but I have TV time. <laughs> yeah, we're in the bed. The yeah. TV might be on. I mean, we're, we might turn it off at, like, 9.00. What um what are some of your favorite ways to promote the book? I know you like to do the in-person events. You do amazing work on social media. And I'll, I will, I'll plug all your handles so people could follow. Like, What are some of your favorite ways to spread the word about your books? Being in education, mm -hmm. the author's visits uh, to the schools are my favorite, hands down. And you just, you see so many kids. I mean, there's like 500 kids in a school, you know, and mostly... I do work with K2 because that's your audience. Like our, yeah. our books are really K2. Um, but I do, I have really started going to see the older kids too um, because I have like a PowerPoint that talks about the process we go through. And they're really at that age where they think it's cool. Like, oh, I can make my own book. Whereas like the younger mm -hmm. kids, they just want to ask you questions and, you know, tell you, that they have a cat and then they went to the beach. It's not really questions about the book. You just get a lot of anecdotes. But the older kids are really fun because they're actually asking questions about the copyright and the, you know, the digital art. So that's been really fun because um, I'm, I'm a little, you know, I'm K2. So to get to talk to the big kids, I think that's, that's really fun because it's yeah. not something I've ever really gotten to do before. And they love it. So, and no. Zach does, um, it's it's really um, easy to get them because Zach also um, does like maps for Fortnite. And so if oh, I cool. mention that, they're like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then is. I've got them because they're kind of acting like, oh, I'm in sixth grade. I don't yeah. need to listen to this person. I'm like, I don't know if you've ever heard of Fortnite. <laughs> and they are listening to the whole presentation. But well, it's, mean, it's fun. I mean, even though like your books are written like, for like a reading level of young children, like older kids like that, like the message is still super important. For them, oh, right? yeah. Like insecurity is a huge issue with, you know, like older, like 12, 13 year old kids. Like it's, it's hard um, being a kid. I, I coach um, eighth grade baseball at the local middle school. And, you know, like sometimes I share that message with them. I'm like, it's all right. You don't have to be like the cool kids. Like, yeah. You know, you just kind of talk to them like here, but read this book to your younger siblings, yeah, exactly. you know, just read it to them. But it does, it, it resonates with the older kids too. Mm -hmm. And I've had so many adults say, oh my gosh, this is me. You yeah. know, I totally get this book. This is totally me. So like the, the adults resonate, you know, resonates with the adults too. Do you hear a lot of feedback from readers? I do actually. Um, it's so neat. I just, I love social media for that because, I mean, I hear from people in Canada and Australia that you wouldn't like normally hear from, you know, and a lot of it is um, teachers and who've uh, shared it with their class and it's part of their SEL, you know, their social emotional learning and the moms of kids who feel different. Are, and I'm a crybaby and I'm going to try not to cry, but <laughs> the moms of the kids who feel different that's the ones I really love hearing from and, yeah. and they'll message me just out of nowhere. Like, you know, I won't have been talking to this person or know this person. Um, and it's a lot of moms of like autistic children. And I, I've i taught so many autistic kids and they're, they're just so bright and it's just a, like a social, you know, thing mm -hmm. for them. 
um, and, and not being able to kind of socialize with their peers. And for them, for the moms to be like, my son reads this every night, you know, he really loves this character because it's like him. And I just love hearing from them. It's such like author validation, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, I reached somebody and they love it. I love to hear from them. But yeah, just like hearing from from families, like that's that's what matters the most. And it's it's amazing to hear that you you've touched so many people's lives and you you're helping and it's gonna continue to grow. It's over time, people are gonna so, keep reading it. I hope so. Um, well, I have two more questions for you, and then I will let you go back to your busy life. Um, okay. so <laughs> you know, my first of my final two is what advice do you have for authors who are similar to yourself? Um, have a story to tell, but might be hesitant to start the process of, of writing a children's book. I think if it's, you know, something you've always wanted to do and it's always been a dream, do it. I mean, you know, especially with self-publishing, it's really easy with Book Baby. I don't know how it is like with other, you know, I'm biased, but um, I don't know how it is with other people, but Book Baby's got so many different packages, you know, that you could, whatever level, like spending level you're at, if that's what's holding you back and, or if it's just you're lost and kind of don't know where to go, there's so many people at Book Baby to help and they've just been so helpful for us. And I mean, if you're reluctant, join those Facebook groups of indie authors, you know, and talk to other authors and just take the plunge because it's just so rewarding. You know, I've, that's that's been the biggest thing is it's something I've wanted to do since I was little and I, I finally did it so you know it's just the sense of accomplishment that you feel so don't be scared it doesn't have to be perfect I mean you can fix it and that can be your second edition I mean exactly. you know, just kind of jump in and it doesn't have to be that bestseller the first time out you you learn along the way and then you'll come out with that next one, that next one, and it'll just build on it and be better and better. But I would definitely say do it if it's something you've always wanted to do. Because yeah. you're you're never too old to accomplish something. I mean, it's been, what, 35 years since I first had the dream. Not that I'm 35, I'm 40, but it's from five. <laughs> well, and also your your great American novel might might still come one day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I think I'll you don't stick think, with the children's books. <laughs> you don't think you'd ever write write a novel? I don't know. Um, several older kids at at authors visits have asked me to write a chapter book. You know, that's more for them. And I was like, okay, I might could do a chapter book. I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever finish that novel. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Well, what does the future look like for you, Zach, the awkward avocado? I know you kind of hinted at this where you mentioned there might be more books. So what, yeah. what do you have in the future? So um, hopefully this year um, we will publish our third book. Um, nice. And it's a Christmas book about our crazy, wonderful family. And I hope Zach is working on that as we speak because we are at the illustration stage of that. Um, so I think he's about a little over halfway through illustrating that. And this one, um, like we talked about earlier, of having more detail, especially with the illustration, this one's going to be like so many details because it's Christmas and Christmas is just decorations and all kinds of traditions. So um, the illustrations are just beautiful. And Zach says this one is going to be his favorite. I think the second one is my favorite. Um, but Zach thinks the Christmas one's going to be his favorite, and we are super excited about doing that one. Um, there's so many little Easter eggs for our uh, family to see and people who um, know our family, so I can't wait for them to be like, oh my gosh, that's me or that's this, because that okay. family is like Italian and mine is Belgian, and we have so many different traditions that are that are crazy and all up in the book. So we're excited about that one, but it should be coming out um, later this year for the holiday season. And then I think we might do a couple more with the Awkward Avocado series. And then we might try a new series from one of those ideas in the idea notebook. All right. Well, this is very, this is a lot, plenty of content <laughs> to produce. I'm excited. I also love Christmas. So Christmas is my favorite holiday. So I'm Me too. excited for your Christmas book. 
We're excited too. I cannot wait. But I want to say thank you. Um, this has been amazing to talk to you and I'm so happy for you and Zach and the work you're doing is amazing. So thank you for being here. I really, thank really you so much, it. Joe. Thank you for this. It was so much fun.